Well, in the middle of a live trade here in the euro, got long here on this um, retest of the level here. 241 is a failed break lower, so it sees the break and says, "I, I don't believe it's going to break. I don't believe it's going to be a successful break lower." America turns around and we're up 18 ticks right now. The trade management is set for. It's really opened up because for, with what I'm doing now. So the we we get to plus 10. I move the entry to to. Uh, I'm sorry. We move the stop to entry plus one, and then trail by 20. And since you know we're aiming for a fewer number of trades, we're, we're trying to reduce you know, over trading basically. And what that means is is that each individual trade that you take, we want to maximize the movement. And to do that, you have to give it more room. All right, so we've been, you know, almost like scalping and trying to scalp our way into runners with, you know, stop movements that are re really tight, really tight trails. And the problem there is that you, the, the, act, the, the costs can really eat into your, your profitability. Um, and so this is what I'm doing now. I've made a number of model changes, which well, I'll describe in more detail in a, in another video and then um, with an accompanying change in the trade management my expectation is that we'll see less total trades per week um, and then the question becomes what profitability do you see all right um, now for those, this is a strategy that would apply to someone trading you know, all four markets or, or multiple markets. Ultimately it'll be not just four, right? We're gonna, we'll, we'll keep expanding. But it would not be a good approach necessarily for someone who is only trading a single market because you know, I'm targeting from the analysis, I'm targeting um, about three quarters of a trade per day so that's a handful of trades per week per market um which may not be what you want if you're doing only a single market so if you're only trading oil you might be you might be interested you, you want to take more trades um because that's your only source of of, of revenue all right um so here in this in this trade the um we're at 20 ticks. We'll start trailing by 20 if we can break above the POC here. And then we'll just see what happens. Or rather, I'll see what happens later because I'm about to walk up the door. Um, earlier, there was a, a long signal here in the yen that would have, let's see, what would have happened? I didn't, it, it didn't fill, which I'll explain why in a minute here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So we would have scratched on that. Um, but the problem here is that I I had this this instance here used to be running NQ in SIM, and then I moved the yen over. And when I did that, because it was in SIM, it automatically changed the um, the open trade window. It automatically changed the account to sim and so it placed the order in sim but this is a live instance and so it just the order it just gets rejected so I ended up not placed that order that order did not get placed because of that so I've got that fixed now and I checked all the rest of them and now we're trailing by 20 here in the in the euro it needs to it'll need to break that high to get anything going um no no trades today in CL or GC thus far and then we'll see we'll see what happens here okay all right so here we are at the end of the day and uh, no no more trades or no trades at all in the yeah let's see there's a nice move there wasn't there right off right off the right off the open here 
Yeah, this is the case where I didn't get filled, yeah, because of that, the, the setting error. Okay, so no other trades in the yen. Nothing in CL or GC. And then in 6E, the one that was uh, being shown live, you can see what we got is we got um, 22 ticks, and then it rolled over. I'm trailing by 20, so I make two. And the question, of course, is, well, what if you trail differently? What would happen? And because you hate to see that, right? There's you know, 20 ticks is a is a is a decent amount. It's you sort of hate to give that up. Um, and the previous way that I was doing this, where I was taking more trades per market, I would scale out, uh, not scale out, but um, trail quite a bit quite a bit more tightly. In fact, the way I would trail it was um, at 10 move to plus 5 and then at 15 move to plus 10 and then go for it um, now because I'm taking less trades per market I want to give it more room to work uh, so it's basically moved it moved to uh, plus 1 at 10 ticks and then just stay there until you start and so you start trailing by 20 at 20 ticks right, but it, this you know you see this and this kind of begs the question well what would happen if you trailed it uh, differently and so, you know, I, you know, we have the ability to, to analyze that. This is, let's see, let's make sure this is right. So this is trailing by 20. And then this is the 6E. Um, and then moving the stop to plus 1 at plus 10. And then at plus 15, doing nothing, just leaving it there. And then you start trailing by 20 when you get to 20. All right. Um, and that's what this results in. All right, so this number, you know, I showed this in yesterday's yesterday's video where I'm aiming for I'm aiming for you know, less than one trade per day on average. Okay, um, and I want to see you know this is a, a number. In this case, it's ticks. So for for um, the the euro, that's you know, time, multiply that by six point two five. And then um, this is sort of the, the quality rating of the trades. So that's really ticks per trade is what that works out to. So for every trade that I took, my, my gross profit was 4.92 ticks. All right. Um, across, in this case, it's across 70 days. And so let's see what would happen. Does, does this number go up or down if we trail more tightly? Okay, so let's try that. So the way I was trailing before was like this. In, instead of a 20 tick trail, I was doing 15. Okay. And instead of uh, moving it to one, you know, plus one at, after I get 10 ticks, I move to plus five and then plus 10. That's, so that's what I was doing before. All right. Let's run this and see. This will take a this will take eh, probably ten or fifteen seconds to run. Um, it's quite a bit slower on this on the production machine than it is on the development machine. This system is um, from 2013, so six years old. Um, though we're not seeing the uh, dramatic increases in processor speed as we used to, and you can see the difference here is you know, it's fairly dramatic. Uh, it was 256, and now it's 184. This is, you know, ticks of profit that you're giving up by um, um, trailing too tightly. Uh, and so, uh, you know, you can kind of play with it and see. Well, you know, well, what else? What else could I have done? You know, how, how else could I have uh, could I have trailed? What if I kept the trail at 20? Does that you know, does that help at all? Um, and we can run that. So we're currently working with. Um, 184 is the number, right? So 256 was the number we had that represented uh, in sort of giving the market the most room um, while still protecting yourself from a loss if you get 10 ticks, all right? And now what we're doing is we're, uh, you know, we by trailing super tightly, you can see we give up quite a bit, 70, 70 ticks or so. Not a small number, all right? Um, and now we are going to just change the trail to 20 ticks so still trying to 
keep a really tight rein at the beginning of the trade and then opening opening it up a little bit once it uh, once it hits once it hits 20 ticks um, so 256 was the for the number I'm working with right now then we had 184 we need, we need, a, we need like the jeopardy music right here to play while we wait for this to run, run through the simulation we're gonna do this a couple more times so I'll when we do it the next time I'll, re I'll refresh your memory on exactly what's happening here so that's 188 okay so changing the trail and only the trail doesn't have much impact and what that means that lot logically what that means is that um, these tight trails are, are where you're getting taken out of the market and then you really never get the opportunity to to trail by 20. all right so let, let's play with these a little bit Let, what if we went like this what if we said uh at 10 go ahead and move to plus one so get, you know get, get protective but at 15 let's go to plus five all right so let's uh instead of waiting for 20 ticks to start trailing by 20 as soon as you get 15 lock in five all right giving you giving yourself only 10 ticks of room so that this is still a pretty tight trail and let's run this so now what's actually happening is do I have it up from yesterday I don't uh, what's actually happening is the you know what we've done is we've you know I've built a model that through the end of uh, September in this case all right and then I, I ran predictions using that model for the next six months and then I analyzed those predictions and then based upon the ones that show up more often than once, <laughs> the ones that show up more frequently and show uh, a decent profitability are the ones that I stick with. All right. And so this is, you know, this is the, you know, this is the frequency and trade quality are the two key factors there. Bucket size is referring to um, how you sort of group, how you group the, the trades. Um, in aggregate to see if um, that trade is is uh, repeatable within that within that window so what I'll end up doing is um, I'll look for I, I run it the first thing I do is I take I take six buckets so the, 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 the most recent four weeks and then the most recent four weeks after that and then four weeks after that, four weeks after that. and I want to see do I have high quality uh, codes that are showing up in more than one of those buckets? All right, and if I do, that's a candidate. And then, but but, but I can change the size of this bucket because it kind of depends on how they fall. All right, so it's worth looking at four week buckets and then three week buckets and two week buckets and one week buckets and I'm getting an idea for how the how the market changes over time. All right, so anyway, uh, let's get back to the results here. That's two fifty three. So that's essentially the same. 256 was the number we were working with as the best. All right. Um, and what we had done is we had locked in five at plus 15 and then trailed by 20. Um, well, what if we did this? What if we what if we went ahead and locked in that five right at the 10 tick mark instead of just one? Let's, let's, let's try that and see. Okay. And again, we need Jeopardy music here. This is going to take about 10 or 15 seconds. So the, uh, you know, this method of, of looking at actual predictions that the machine learning system would have made and using it to help identify the behaviors in that market that show up more often uh, is sort of the best way I've seen to use the machine learning system as a way to find um, you know profitable trades com with completely without any human interaction at all this is all run completely unattended all right so this drops us to 243 which is really not that far from 256 okay so this is actually looking at that I would I would almost be willing to uh, to you know change it to that because making I've had 
we're, we're, it's Tuesday. I've had two trades in this market this week, and I've made three ticks, right? Because all of them have been just these little tiny moves, and you, you get you get ten ticks, and you move the stop to plus one. So you could do a little better. It would feel you'd feel a little better. You could see overall across the entire spectrum of time. To, there's um, the difference is 243 versus 256. It's really not that much, right? There's only 13 ticks. So if that made you feel a little bit better that you came in and had made, you know, a couple of five tick trades instead of a couple of one tick trades, then that would be worth doing. So now let's do this again. I think we did it earlier, actually. Now we're trailing by 20, keeping our 20 tick trail. This is the same tight trail that I was using before. And I would expect this to drop dramatically because this is getting too tight. Here's what I think. Let's see, let's see if that's true or not. The thing is I don't I don't need to guess because this is what this is doing is actually running a simulation now on the data from after the model was built. So the model was built through end of September. So starting from 10.1, I've got all that data and I'm actually running a simulation that says based on the predictions that the machine would make what would happen if i if i manage to trade this way using these you know these behaviors that i've identified or as as the ones i'm interested in so yeah when we when we when we, when we trail too tightly we get that 188 um okay so that's not cool we don't want that what if we did this um what if instead of at 15 moving it to plus 10 what if we what if we did it at 20 so what would normally happen is if you moved it to plus 5 here then the stop would just stay there until the market got to 20 and then it would stay there still because you'd have to get to 25 before you start trailing you're trailing by 20 so you need to get to 25 to equal where the stop is now and then you'd start trailing behind it. So by by setting it up this way, we're saying when you get to 20 ticks, lock in 10 ticks uh, and start trailing by 20. But since you've already got 10 locked in, you're actually not going to start trailing until you get to 30 ticks, right? Then then the 20 tick trail, will still, you'll actually see something happen. All right, so let's see, let's see what this does here. So in the, if we if I was running this like today, I would have gotten ten ticks instead of two. That's the difference. Um, so if you, you if you find one of these little twenty tick twenty tick moves, then you'll you know, you'll make more than just one or two ticks. So that's two oh six, and so now I think it's a, it gets to be a little bit of a tough call, right? So two oh six is a full fifty ticks less than than the best number all right so to me it's not worth it particularly since i'm what i'm doing is i'm really looking for those days where you, the market pops and goes right and we've seen those especially in the in the currencies in the euro and in the yen where you get into the trade and the market just runs then you do an ad and it keeps running um and those are the ones i'm looking for and so i don't mind so much that um uh, you know, I made only two ticks today instead of ten. What I would mind a lot is if I took myself out of a trade that would have made a lot. So that's you know that's my trading personality. Um, so I'm inclined to um, consider um, basically it would look like that, right? Well, typically we have this at fifteen right now the way that the way that the trade management set up. But so at ten move to plus five. And then at 15, do nothing. And then at 20, you start trailing. And you actually don't see anything happen until you get to like 26 ticks. You'll actually see the stop move. So let's run that again and make sure I, I get the number I think I'm supposed to get, which should be 243 if I wrote this down correctly. So you can see the process we go through to figure out, okay, well, what's the, what's the best trail method? Now I haven't I haven't done the yeah 243. So I haven't done the video yet that talks a little bit more in, in detail about um, the you know the changes I've made to the model to look for fewer 
trades that are higher quality and how I'm applying that across all of these markets. Um, so that's that'll be coming, that might be this weekend. And then um, the other thing is, you know, not everyone wants to trade multiple markets like this. So we, we want to take a different approach in terms of how many um, behaviors we'd be looking for in a single market. So I haven't done that analysis yet, but I will for each of these markets, and then you can make your own choice. So the more the more trades you take, the higher your the higher your risk, basically. The more exposure you have to loss. All right, trader new, new traders in particular tend to think about only the gain, only the opportunity. So if I get into the market, I can make money. You don't, you don't think about, if I get into the market, I can lose money. But it's really the way you need to be thinking about it. Um, every, every trade is an, is an opportunity for loss. It's a risk that you're taking that you need to um, you know, carefully think about whether you want to take that risk or not. So um, what we're trying to do here is set it up so that you you basically just turn it on and don't think about it don't worry about it don't even look don't even look at um, the market moves during the day just look at the end result and then turn the system on for the next day update the models every week and off you go um, after a year of doing this this is that's the mode i've gotten to I, I really don't even i don't come home at the end of the day or or, or come back at the end of the session and go through what the market did that day in that market I, I just look at these these numbers and then um, the, really the only the only reason I actually bring up the chart is to do this video is to explain uh, to, you know, look at what happened it is useful uh, for me from a system development standpoint to take a look at it to understand um, if the market is doing something I don't expect or there I see an opportunity that um, I should be taking advantage of. But the mindset has changed from I have to sit here every minute and look for an opportunity and worry about if I should be getting in the market or, or should be staying out to I don't even think about it at all and come at the end of the day. And that's that's to me, that's the real value. All right, there's no emotional roller coaster ride that you're on uh, to trade all right so that's uh that's it for today we'll see what tomorrow brings in tomorrow's oil news so we're gonna we gotta set that up to uh black out during, during that time in fact let's check that we can just do that online here let's see economic calendar is here april Ninth, tenth. Now you've got FOMC minutes tomorrow as well, so I would I would try to be out of the markets by before that comes up. Any, in, any, in any case, there's the oil report right there. All right, so that means we got to change the timing for oil to um, black out that period. So what we want to do is uh, we we want to stop trading. At 720. All right. And then start up again at 735. So let that let that new oil news come out. And then let the market um, you know finish its gyrations and then start up again at 735. I used to stop at 725 and even even later on 720 I used to block it out by by uh, four minutes 728 to 732 um, but I found that the the oil market is moving quite a bit slower than it used to um, and particularly on a Wednesday morning before the oil news and so I would get, I would actually get into a trade here at 720, 724 or something. And then you're in a trade when this that oil news comes out. And that's really a dangerous thing. Um, so now I'm blocking out a, a little bit, a little bit of a bigger period there. Okay. All right. So that's it for today, and we'll see what tomorrow brings. Some